All right, everyone. Welcome to Raw Down. There were two canes today, and now there's two oh, hoes. Hey. Ty, I, I yelled May 19th at him. He fell into a hole. He's just screaming. He doesn't know where he is. I. There, oh, well, all right, there he is. He found the soundboard. I only gave him the soundboard button. Yeah, I have the tie outfit on. Editor Ty, throw up the tie outfit. There it is. And I just want to say, shout out to the military for this Memorial Day edition of Monday Night Raw with a real loud, real loud intro to Raw. That was basically like, hey, you see what these people did for you? Fuck you, man. You should be grateful. And now who's the most grateful for the troops? Uh, Vince McMahon coming out in something that's definitely tonally accurate to what they try to do at the start of the show. Nico, what did this crazy man have to say to us this week? Well, this man definitely wanted to set up Memorial Day. He comes out and he basically, you know, obviously he has to tell the fans to shut up. But he comes out and he speaks about what happened last week. How... It was funny that, you know, Triple H was supposed to, you know, do his bidding, but he didn't. Instead, he hit his demon seed, his only son. This is his memorial day, as his son is injured now, broken, destroyed, because of Triple H and his so-called friend. So... He comes out, and he also decides to mention, hey, we have a new GM announcement. I can't find one. None of these guys are any good. So here's my new executive assistant. And look, I, I don't care what you think of Kane. Literally from the spawns of hell, Jonathan Coachman comes out. Boom. 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 Get him Boom. out of here. Stuck. Slap yeah. his bald head. And he comes out, and he's like, oh, he gets I real agree. sleepy. I <laughs> am so sleepy. My uh, real reaction. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> this is this is not good. I thought we were done with Coachman. I didn't think he was going to still be on the show, but... <laughs> yeah, I thought Viscera killed him. I, now I'm going to hope that, uh, you know, this is just a temporary thing, but... Uh, Anyways, he comes out and he's like, I want to personally thank you, Mr. McMahon, for making me this position, for giving me this power. And I appreciate uh, everything you've done for this company. And, you know, he's basically doing a kiss ass speech. I think the best part of this is Vince McMahon no sells this. He doesn't even say, oh, you're welcome or thanks or anything. He's just like, all right, now go find me Triple H. Which I thought was great. I think anytime somebody puts down Jonathan Coachman in any ways is a good Raw segment. But, uh, you know, this is a classic McMahon segment. He talks. It's good. It gets heat. You know, again, Mr. McMahon kits I'm finding is more true to life than the not. But, you know, interesting way to start the show. Yeah, I think the best part about this uh, segment was the McMahon sucks sign at the very beginning. <laughs> that was pretty good. Is Shane McMahon braver than the troops? Have any troops fallen off of a stanchion onto a crash pad? Yeah, probably. I would like to know. How about going through actual glass? Real glass. Yep, real glass. Try Shane a river. <clears throat> hey, guys. <laughs> Edder Ty came out of the hole. Hey, get the fuck out of here. We're having a good episode for once, and your ass shows this up, stupid and I don't want to hear any. Oh, no I one. hate these people. I hate those people like you do every goddamn episode. Hold on, Nico. I got that little shit out of the out of the room. It's raw down, Ty, now. Oh, oh thank, thank God. God. Buddy. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, okay. yeah, fuck Editor Ty. I threw him back in his cage. I... Hey. What? What about what about that bullshit Vince was saying about uh, Shawn Michaels after the Spirit Squad literally broke his fucking leg on camera in front of everybody? Shawn got humiliated. He can't walk yes. anymore, dude. He can't walk. Shawn. I think I think Shawn Michaels should sue for financial compensation. Do you think Vince has any money? <laughs> oh, we'll get there. 
But hold up, Ember, I gotta drop some knowledge on this freak real quick. Shane McMahon, Uh-oh. honestly, very good wrestler. And this is this is this is a not a joke. This man's like a legendary hardcore icon. And I don't think anyone will disagree with that. Yeah. Emerald, there was a match where he got a belly to belly suplex through glass, and the glass didn't break, and he just dropped his stupid little head on the concrete, and you just hear a big disgusting thud. And you oh. want to know what the stupid fucker said? What? Do it again. And then he threw him again, and it didn't break. <laughs> and you want to know what he did? As he's bleeding out of his head, concussed the hell, he goes. Do it again. (laughs) Then he got thrown through the glass. I'll show you later. It was crazy. So yeah, Shane, hardcore icon. We got zero hardcore icons on the show except for Mick and uh, Edge later. Well, listen, listen, listen. Vince, like, yeah, my son's doing better. And the people of Tacoma, which is where we're at uh, this week, uh, Mm -hmm. they, they booed the shit out of that. They hate Tacoma hates the Vincent McMahon family. Fair enough. I agree. Mm-hmm. There's not, <laughs> you know, there's not much to like, you know. No. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Jonathan Coachman being off commentary is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, huge. Listen, you might not like him being backstage, but just having him try to go like, "Hey, uh, where's Triple H?" and then everyone goes, "Shut the fuck up, moron." I hate you, Coach. And he goes, oh, okay. Yeah, we will actually see less of Coachman since he's away from the commenter's table. I uh, I pray that happens, but I don't know if that's going <laughs> to happen. He wasn't well, on but... the show too much. We'll get to him later. Yeah. Yeah. But he did announce uh, the stuff we're seeing tonight, Edge versus Big Show. Oh. Okay. I shudder. Edge is going to die. Uh, another Intercontinental... Intercontinental Championship match, ugh, not again. But at least people are fighting different people. It's not all the same oh. same people, same matches now. And Vince introduced the uh, uh, Kane as being like this big force too. I was surprised. Yeah, because he's never brought up Kane once. He could yeah, use, that's true. He could have used him against Sean. I think did he use him at all? Uh, I think I, once. I, yeah, early on. In, like, January, I think. Yeah. Oh, he, just, he forgot about it. He got the Holy Spirit squad. He said, yeah. nah, I'm good. Which they haven't I brought up at Kane, all. I, I, when we get there, I, I do hope Kane beats Shelton, because I think it'd be funny. Because Shelton just got that belt back. Was there... I'm, I know I'm, I'm going hot off right off the bat. Was there any sexual assault in this episode? No. Oh, no. so that's why it was a good nope. episode. Okay, there's good. there's some comments from Jerry well, Waller, but well, that's Jerry. You don't hear it. Well, well, actually, that's a comment from Jim Ross. It's kind of out there too. Yeah, the commenters are really horny. Also, depending on how you would classify what Viscera did to Armando later, which we'll talk about. Okay, okay, maybe. Okay, well, enough. yeah, you know, maybe. Yeah. So Kane came out, and uh, he's looking hot. People are going crazy for Kane for some reason. And then, uh, yeah, Sheldon Bemby, Emerald, and uh, Dave going to throw some shit around on that one. Yummy, yummy. Yeah, we're going to start this off with a big green sign that says, Off your meds again? Question yeah, true, mark? true. Yeah, they got me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Kane towering over Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin is not, it, it, he is confused because this is not RVD. How's this this big bald man with a scary looking grin? He's gonna take my belt away. I just got this belt back. I gotta I gotta do my best here. Well, and they start to go at it. And then they cut to commercial, like almost <laughs> immediately. And then they come back from commercial and Shelton's got Kane in a fucking headlock. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck? And they, they show the, the stuff you miss during commercial. It's like Okay, he got him out of the ring. He hit him with the he hit his head in the post, uh, threw him back in the ring, did a couple moves, got him in the headlock. But Kane being Kane breaks out, and it it he's throwing him, slamming him. Shelton's actually got some pretty good counters. He's able to twist himself around Kane's arm like some kind of fucking snake. 
and uh, just get out of the holds, get out of the throws. Uh, it's going. It's going. Shelton gets in a corner. Kane, <laughs> a lot of a lot of neck grabbing. They they go for the throat a lot with the choke slams. That's his finish, <clears throat> so that's why. Right. Ah, okay. So Kane's yeah. always trying to finish. Yeah, he's trying to come. That's the whole bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're fighting. I see some good signs in the crowd. The twenty dollar man, dog pound with arrows pointing at a crowd area. Wow, he's in TNA. They're not supposed to do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> and then, and then I see this really weird sign in the crowd, but but before I talk about that sign, Shelton's on the ground. Kane's going for the kill, and we get another goddamn interruption of the voices in Kane's mm-hmm. head. And... Now you hold on a minute, you fucking hack. <laughs> you... Why? Benny didn't need that. <laughs> Come on, man. Ben needs that. You didn't talk about just how invincible Kane was during this whole match. Okay? And how... And just the great injustice that was the commercial break in the middle of it. Yeah. Kane uh, is invulnerable to all damage. <laughs> and then we go to a commercial break, and Kane is now being headlocked in the middle of the ring, just choking to death from Shelton Benjamin. Because apparently... Bro. For a long time. Oh, yeah. Also, this went on for, what would you guys say, like 45 seconds? They were just in this hold in the middle of oh, the yeah. ring? Because apparently, off camera, they want us to believe that Kane was knocked into a, a ring post and then begazzled so hard that Shelton was able to wrangle him back into the ring and choke him out for minutes at a time. No shot. Well, you were looking at all your signs, Benny. I was watching, and it was terrible. How dare they? How dare they do this to Kane? It's it's true, it's true. Shelton uh, got some sort of advantage, probably from the people backstage. Who who could say? But ah, Shane. But but Kane Kane, Kane gets out of the chokehold, and he starts he starts <laughs> tossing uh, Shelton around. Uh, and he's going in for the kill. Shelton's on the ground. Kane's got him right where he wants him. And then he gets interrupted by the voices and this big explosion on screen. Dave, what the fuck is that? Oh, well, you know... What the fuck is that? Well, that's Kane. That's spooky, weird, hair metal, uh, red and black masked old Kane. You know, about that? With a heavily distorted, uh... Theme music. I don't think Emerald knows. Yeah. Emerald, did you know that was like Kane when he came out? And you're like, oh no, I oh no, that was just <laughs> oh I no, that was Kane's demons manifested in the no. physical form. Oh, no. That's why well, I got I mean, confused. Yes. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but... yes, but also no. Yeah, Emerald, that's supposed to be Kane when he debuted. What do you mean supposed to be? That is Kane. Yeah. Oh, that is Kane. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when he when he debuted, he looked like that. And he uh, took off his mask in 03, I think. Yeah. That explains why in the crowd there was a big sign of the mask that OG Kane uh, was wearing when he came out. Yeah. Yeah, and he had yeah. hair. Also, I was uh, going to mention that Kane's not bald. He has half bald and half uh, buzz cut, and it was a real fucked look. Yeah. Oh. I, I get it's supposed to be like he's demented, but it's stupid. It's really bad. Yeah. Well, so yeah, then, I thought is... this was a new wrestler. No shot. No. <laughs> nope. That's that's old Kane. That's supposed to be old Kane, yeah. So what does Kane do to Kane? Choke slams him. That's yeah, funny. so so Kane Kane stares longingly into Kane's eyes. Uh, and then evil Kane just grabs him, choke slams him, and then summons the fire pyro. Uh, and then just does a a naughty little backflip out of the ring and walks away. Yeah, because Kate used to do that. <laughs> That's and yep. Shelton is just gone. Yeah, Shelton and the ref <laughs> disappeared. This was a sports entertainment finish. They just died. Yeah, <laughs> they just they got unmade when Kane showed up. They had to unload their assets for old Kane to get so, in. So I did hear when Kane Kane v Kane would were longingly staring into each other's eyes. I heard from the crowd, "Kick his ass." Oh, they were excited. 
They okay. Were very excited. Uh, I got I got a bad yeah. news for you, Emerald. Uh oh. This was a good match. What the Kane versus Shelton Benjamin? I liked it. I thought they. Yeah, did. it was good. Why can't I, Rob I Van Dam a... have a good match with Shelton? What the fuck, dude? No, because they no. fought each other too many times. I'm gonna tell you right now. Fuck this match. I don't oh. care how good it is. What? Well, no, well, because it didn't Ooh. end. I didn't like it. Didn't end. It. Nobody won. Oh yeah, it's bullshit. That's what I'm saying. No, it, that, it was that's good. Not even, that's not my problem. What is your problem? I fucking hate when they just throw two heels in a fucking match. It's yeah. Stupid. No, you're right. You're right. Oh, that's fair. It's, yeah. It's like there's just no heat. There's nothing going well, on. Like, here's the problem. Really... Hmm. I think it, Kane's he, supposed to be a face okay. now. Oh, sure. Yeah, he don't is. let me finish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's fine. No, that's go on. That's fine. I'll, I'll be crying. I'm okay. I'll be that. I'll be that. Apparently, domestic violence I, runs in the You Don't Have to Do This podcast. I got excited. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> don't hit me, please. <laughs> Raw down ties going back in the hole. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Uh, <laughs> nah, but no, it's like I get, which this makes this even stupider. Because then, like, he was what a heel for a month, and then now he's face Kane again. Yeah. I, this whole storyline is fucking dumb. Two Canes is dumb. I hate Kane. Kane's the fucking worst part of these Raw you shows, in my opinion. Son of a bitch. Yo, how dare you? Yeah, I'll stand by it. Fuck Kane. Fuck this match. Fuck two canes. <laughs> this is shit. That the cane mask that Kane was wearing did not. It looked much shittier than the cane mask that Kane <laughs> used to wear. It did. Well, it probably got you know aged up. So you know, so, you know got old. Yeah. Speaking of masks, I'd rather watch Rey Mysterio job out as champion and watch a cane match. This is dog shit. <laughs> Ooh. I'm damn yeah, I'm, glad, well, I'm glad you said that Kane's music was fucked up because I thought it was losing my mind or Peacock was doing something because it it's Kane's theme but it's not Kane's theme. It's yeah, like it's, it's slow chemical but with like extra like reverb and stuff onto it. Yeah, make it all distorted and weird. I think I, they made the original that. with the um, slow chemical version. Now, Nico, I have a question to ask you. Uh, I am a good. Would you have question. preferred? If instead of old Kane, it was female Kane that came out. Ooh. <laughs> uh, These are tough questions, Nico. And you need to answer. No, because. Oh, then my it's goodness. Like, because then it'd just be, a, uh, you know, at least male Kane attacked Kane, but you couldn't realistically do that with female Kane. What do you mean? I mean, because that would set up a match, and at this point in WWE, there is women and men, like, they can have mixed matches, but I don't think they can actually have, like, intergender matches, so it it would just oh, be a distraction you know finish, like, That's at true. the end of the day. So it's like, that yeah, would be even worse. Yeah. So, again... I think that would be even worse because, like, at least Mayo Kane attacked him. So it's like, okay, there's a setup. Where this would have been the, uh, they play the music, they come out, the pussy stands there for, like, 15 seconds, just staring at him like, what are you doing here? And then they get beat for the finish, which is always dumb. <clears throat> Emerald, who's your favorite Kane? Kane or Kane? Hmm. I'd have to go with Kane. All right, Dave. Which is your favorite Kane? Probably Kane. Okay. See, I like yeah. Kane. It's a tough. It's a tough choice, but I think we have to go with. Kane. Yeah. <laughs> what I about what Kane. about what about Citizen Kane? Ooh, I don't know no, what that is. <laughs> but what else was tough was so then like there was another commercial break or what have you, and then they oh, come back goodness. in and then just recap everything that just happened again. Uh, with JR just being like, I don't know what happened here, but it was terrifying. I'm shocked. And they just they just recover what happened. They were really I feel like they padded for time a lot this episode. Yeah. The, it, it felt there. Empty. I must yeah, have linked like, and re and missed that recap of that because I don't I do not recall. It was like three minutes long. Very upset about his son Kane being killed by his son Kane. 
And then we got a Paul Heyman jump scare talking about the X Men video game while Drowning Pool played. Yep. <laughs> so, so that's the music. On sponsor cast? We'll see if that's on the sponsor cast. I will go back to the match real quick and point out that Jim Ross said looked like Sheldon was going down like the Poseidon. Check out the Poseidon Adventure, whatever that fucking movie is. I, I also had that in my notes, this. but it definitely like didn't fit. It was good though. That will either already be out or be out at some point, or we're recording it now. Who could say? Who could say? Poseidon. We have in the can what will end up being probably a four-hour V for Vendetta review. So if you see your V for Vendetta brain rot on these shows now, that's why. Which you may have heard already, probably not. Maybe you'll hear it November 5th. Maybe it'll just be some random day. Maybe it'll never come out. Who knows? Maybe we'll all be V'd before that happens. <laughs> but somebody um, that VGS I wish... Lost. Somebody that I wish got V for Vendetta epic style is the coach. And he was instructed to go find Triple H. And he's backstage talking to Carlito. And he just refuses to believe that Carlito doesn't know where Triple H says. And Carlito tells him to go fuck off. Basically. And then he turns around. Hold on, before you go. How did you think of this being Carlito's only fucking spot in this entire show? It was great. (laughs) 10 out of 10. Best use of Carlito we've had so far. (laughs) Oh my god. Brutally. Then Armando Alejandro Estrada shows up. I cannot roll my R's, so I'm not going to butcher it. Shows up. And he's like, hey, coach, listen. I haven't seen Triple H. But if Vince ever needs anything, here's executive assistant now. You come find me and we'll get it sorted. And coach's like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever, buddy. I gotta go find Triple H. And then Armando is gripped up and pinned against the wall. Face into the into the stone, ass out by Viscera, who is just holding him up against this wall and is really pissed about what happened last week, about what Umaga did to him. He says, I'm gonna fucking kill you and Umaga, you bitch. My wife is sad now because you killed me. And then we go from that segment to... Coach is incredibly useless because Vince McMahon has already found Triple H backstage. (laughs) (laughs) And Triple H is holding his massive cock. And Vince says, hey, how's it going? Gives him a friendly handshake. Triple H holds on to it for a while while staring him down. He's like, hey, man, do we have a problem? It's like, no, no, we're cool. It's fine. Shane's not dead. And then Triple H is bitches again about not being the number one contender match, even though he loses all of his championship matches of like the seven he's had. And he denies hitting Shane with his cock on purpose again. And he talks about they recap how he had to kill the entirety of the spirit squad. Triple H like, I just had to take care of business, man. They attacked me. And he says, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Whatever. It's fine. I'll give you an opportunity to get your revenge on all of them. We're going to do a Spirit Jack match tonight. They're yeah. Gonna fight Kenny. And the Spirit Squad are the Lumberjacks. Then you can get all your revenge. And Triple H says, uh, yeah, cool. I'm going to murder all of them with my giant cock. And walks Gosh. away. Yeah, his big shaft he's going to use on all of these young men. These young virile men. Because don't worry, later, I'll talk about it. They make very sure you know that Kenny is only 20 years old. Yeah. It's all they have to talk about, because believe it or not, the Raw main event was not good. Yeah. Shocking. Shocking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This might be a debate later on. I, uh, well, all right. Apparently it's going to be a debate I was not expecting. <laughs> if this is a tie level debate, then I'm just going to quit the show. But... <laughs> Miko, would you say you're a master of the debate? Uh, I would say I am the lord of debates. Mm. And I am the lord of master debaters. <laughs> so okay. I have no masturbation uh, segue here. So, hey, Umaga's here. What do you Umaga! think? Umaga! So, <laughs> what a f- 
what a what a transition, guys. Basically, Viscera is is uh, announced down to the ring after you know assaulting our boy Armando. Hold on, I got it. I got it. You got it. Okay, here he comes. Well, keep all this in. Keep all this He's in. Got it. Yeah. Five. Nico is the Lord of the Master of Debate. The master of murdering people with a big thumb. Umaga is here. Tell me about it. Wait, who me? Umaga! No. Wallace. Yeah, so Viscera is announced. He's, you know, doing his slow jaunt down to the ring because he's uh, the biggest man to ever be alive. Or at least he would be led to believe that considering the commentary coverage of him every time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Umaga then just runs up behind him while he's still walking down to the ring. Grabs him and and uh, slams his face down into the steel steps. Oh. the The exact verbiage they used escapes me. I'm sorry, viewers. And Viscera then just lays there lifeless. Umaga lifts him up and does a karate thrust into his neck. Drags him the rest of the way into the ring as Lillian watches, horrified, as her current love interest in the company is being dismantled by Umaga. The bell is then rung, and Umaga climbs the ropes and frog splashes onto the corpse of Big Viscera. Turns to Armando, who holds the cigar up in the air and yells, Sumoa! Breaks it. And then as Viscera tries to stand, finally, he just gets Samoa spiked and pinned. Uh, everyone is just shocked, because this it is... <laughs> it wasn't even a match. It was a murder. The bell rang. It was a match. I, counted. I, I came out of the hole. Hey, guys. JR, JR, yells, JR yells about how it's so shocking because Viscera is such a big man. You can use his pajama top to cover an infield during a rainout. Oh, my. Why they got to do him like that? Poor Vis. Poor Vis. But yeah, no, Viscera Umaga didn't assassinated that. him. Yeah, it's over. Him. Let this be a lesson to you guys. If you're a heat icon like Viscera and go like 30 and 0, you'll just get killed by Umaga in 30 seconds. Because Umaga is the most powerful champion. I don't know what you want. How old do you guys think Viscera is? 30 something? Yeah, he's got to be in like late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, he's like 55 for sure. Yeah, I thought he was like 55. He's 35 in 2006. Yeah, because he was wrestling in the 90s. (laughs) So. He's like the boogeyman. <laughs> right. Yeah. And this is also a theme of they just are cooking with nothing for this show because <laughs> the Kane match and also this after the match, they just really hang on people just emoting and no yeah. commentary. Yeah, they probably yeah. put another, what, two or three minutes at the end of this of just Umaga running around the ring screaming and Samoan at people and it's like yeah. intimidating the ref, etc. And, and just- Lillian. Being Cutting to Lillian. <laughs> Poor Lillian. Can't catch a break. Do you but guys think that there was something missing from this this episode? Like, they, they planned something that just didn't go through? Because people have broken legs and shit? Gotta be Marty Jannetty. No, uh, <laughs> yes. <kidding>. No, they <laughs> just, yeah, they just didn't have anything. The fucking the SmackDown rebound went like four minutes. They just didn't have anything this week. Yeah, it was a weird episode. And a lot yeah, there of infiltration like... from non raw stuff coming in. Well yeah. Yeah, they're trying to set up a pay per view for another brand, but also not even uh promoting the other brand really. So Yeah, fuck 'em. It's okay though, we got Elk Mantis in the signage. Elk Mantis? Elk Mantis I don't know what that means. Yeah, Elk was just Mantis like... was in the cut all night. I'm pretty. Elk mantis. Elk mantis. I'm pretty sure during this match is where I saw the Costco fifty five dollars is gay. <laughs> so I mean, listen, Happy Pride Month. Happy is Pride that a share month. price? I maybe. I don't know. Listen, a caught you if you were gay and bought Costco at fifty five dollars, you have uh like eight hundred and forty eight dollars currently. Woo! So. Maybe that was the cost of a membership at the time? No. <laughs> That's not the cost of a membership now, I don't think. No, no, no. No. I forget how much I pay for it, but shout out to Costco. Oh, this guy got Costco. 
What a yeah. weirdo. What? Think I go to fucking Sam's Club like a peasant? No, you go You're to BJ's. Right. Disgusting. God forbid I go to BJ's. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Damn. Speaking Damn. of BJ's, the announcers really fucking want one from everybody in this match because they are just ridiculously horny. Nico, yeah. tell us about uh, the women. You love the them. women. Oh, the women. The women. <laughs> The women. I didn't watch this match. What do you mean? What do you mean? What? You're I'm joking. Oh, okay. Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna kill come you. Come through my screen and <laughs> just strangle you. Uh, well, so this is a two-on-two -two match with it's Victoria and fuck Candice Michelle versus Beth Phoenix debut and Toya Wilson. Uh. I gotta say, I don't know what the fuck was going on today, but everybody was looking prime tonight. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't you guys say so? Yeah. Wait, it was 2v2? I saw six the women. The, uh, yeah. Mickey and Trish uh, were uh, uh, the other hanging one. out. Oh, okay. So, and I will be straight up because Mickey has tag team with both of these women before. Like... I feel like this is another way. It's like the woman's champion does not matter as much. They didn't even come out to Mickey's music. They came out to Victoria's, which, again, peak move. Victoria's probably one of the best in this company, but still, it's like your champion's kind of getting buried. You failed to realize something, Nico, that she's not what the lady to mess with. Whoop! Also, yeah. Dog Tori <laughs> is here, and Dog it is Tori. dressed as uh, Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. It is Hell Tigger. yeah! The go. Yeah. T I double go er. Yeah. So again, everyone looking peak, right? Um. Again, it starts off with I believe Toya and Beth. They go at it. You could tell, like Beth's already kind of in the top tier list of these women. Yeah. Just the way she moves and stuff. At least with Victoria, I'm going to talk about when she's in there with Candace in a sec. But um, she she's hitting moves, tags the toy, and of course toy gets some offense in. But eventually, you know, the heat gets on her. But there is that toy segment. So I'm gonna be real. I have no idea if that was actually toy's ring gear, or she just decided to like wear underwear. Like. It honestly confused me for a bit, but at one point she decides that she too did it for The Rock. She too needs to rikishi this woman. Oh, yeah. That's right. So she takes her, like, pants, which, you know, they're like a, it's like a shortcut, like, daisy style kind of thing. She tucks them into her asshole, so it's like, and then she just goes at it in Victoria's face. And Victoria, again expert sells this amazingly while the audience sits there and watch why not me <laughs> and that's a great question one you'll never get an answer to so then by this point they get the heat on toy they're beating her up they're beating her up until she can eventually get um beth in the hot tag and the hot tag I'm going to be honest, I don't know if there was something wrong with it, but it, it was more awkward than I expected it to be, you know? It wasn't as smooth. But, you know, it works. Beth goes in there. Now, when she's in there with Candace, because, like, we just watched her with Victoria again. She's going hard. She's doing stuff. Let me tell you, I've never seen a woman more terrified to hurt another opponent in this company yet <laughs> these were some of the most baby clotheslines that she gave to candace that i ever did see like honestly it looked like more she was kind of going for like a side hug and she just kind of hit her like too light until like the very last one she puts a little oomph into it but the rest were like kind of more hugs well candace is vince's girl and beth is new yeah uh it Look at that. It turns out that um, all the sex stuff is just in the background, not the foreground. Uh... Any... Anyways, she goes for a pretty good slam on Candace, and then she sets up for what I believe they call the Sundance Slam, which uh, I forgot what they'll call it later on. I think it's like the Glamazon Slam or something. Yeah, Glam Slam, yeah. yeah. Glam Slam, yeah, something like that. 
So, which Sundance Slam? I don't know. I kind of like the name of that. It, it kind of flows a bit, but she hits it. It looks great, and you could tell this is where the crowd was like, "Okay, we're kind of into this Beth Phoenix character." Like, I I think just that finisher, because it, it did look impressive, especially for the time. I think that actually got people engaged, and I think this was a pretty good debut for Beth Phoenix. Oh yeah. I don't know about you guys. I thought she looked great. I thought they sold it pretty well. Uh, Trish and Mickey are clearly in the background and all this, but the story is still going. Um, oh, yeah, Victoria took a bump before the slam, landing on Mickey. Of course, both of them getting their asses shown. Uh, but yeah, I'd say pretty good set debut for Beth. And, you know, everybody did fine. It's a, it's a fine match. It was fun. Beth looks insane. She's yeah. so good compared to like everybody else in that ring at that time. Like it's not mm-hmm. Victoria's fault, but like gosh, gosh darn, she was yeah, doing some Fed, stuff. The Fed had gone at least five years without a muscle mommy. Really, is what we're trying to get at. Yeah, and now they've got one again. Yeah, well, they're not selling her as it yet. Which well, not yet, not yet, but maybe they'll learn their lesson. Never. By 2024, they definitely learned their lesson. Oh, yeah. To... Oh, yeah. Tune in for the You Don't Have to Do This Women's Wrestle of the Year 2024 <laughs> cast. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Yeah, this was a totally fine match that did what it had to do, and the announcers were unbelievably horny this whole time. I don't have many specific notes on that because they just would not shut up about how hot everyone is. Of course. The one I do have is a conversation where Jim Ross says, I'd rather have fire ants in my Fruit of the Looms than go on a long car ride with Mickey James. (laughs) And then Jerry Lawler's like, yeah, I want to take a bath with her. What? Uh, (laughs) Thanks, thanks, Jerry. I I think one thing I learned from this whole thing is that... um... My God, I see, I already lost track. One thing I learned is Jim Ross is a lot hornier than I remember him being. Like, Yeah, you've seen his Twitter. Yeah, like, I know nowadays he's like that. I kind of figure that's because he's, like, older and, like, you know, when his wife died and all. But, like, dude, even back then, dude, he was, uh, dude, he was, he was going off dog? Well, you remember that Missy Hyatt quote, right? Uh, not quite. Oh, was that from one not of these the... episodes? No, no, this is recent. Let me see. Missy. Uh, well, yeah, recent. Like, I expect recent Jim Ross to be the biggest pervert on, in town. But, like, you know, old Jim Ross, it was to me, it was always like, you got puppies, king, and Jow being like, ah, shut up, you. Honestly. No, he's all about that life. Yeah, this is her quote. Honestly, me and Jim dated for a couple of years. About two years after his wife passed away, we dated for about two years. So, yeah, I rocked his world, and he's rocked my world. Oh my oh god. Oh my. Oh my. Jim Ross oh can my. still go? That's yeah. crazy. Well, yeah, have you seen him dance? Look at him dance. Oh, Ty, get no. her ties, show it, please. Come on. Get off your ass and do it. Show JR dancing. Let me tell yeah. you, this is the conception that I did <laughs> not expect. <laughs> the the editor Ty, show V hitting that dance. Oh my. <laughs> there he is. My god. This is Cumulating into an extraordinary session. <laughs> You're right. Also, we have a sign that just says pork on it in this segment. Oh, I missed that pork sign. It just yeah. says pork. There is no elaboration pork. on this point. Pork. Also, our sponsors. Yes. We are brought to you by Bowflex. Woo. The phone number is still up. I throw up a picture of it. Listeners, call that number. Let us know in the comments below what happens. We need to figure That's out what happened t- with Kane. Cooper Tires and Skittles. Cooper Please. Tires is crazy. Please Speaking of crazy, what? Melina is here. No. What? Not yet. How did... Yes. No, yes. We, have, we, have, yes, yet. we have King. He's got to oh, yell. Yeah. He's got to yell He's... about ECW for whatever reason. King King went on a hot one. J- he heard JR being horny. And then so... Uh, King's like, I gotta go into business for myself. He picks up a mic and he goes, "It's part of this segment, you fuck. Don't get pedantic." Well, Mal- 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 isn't here yet. Come on. 
Lena's I, always I'm, here in our hearts. It's true. It's I'm very so true. ready. I, I've been watching on SmackDown a bit, and I've been like, she needs to be on fucking Raw. It's true. And she is. And she is. King decides to go on a hot one about how ECW sucks, and that uh, they got a, a Lawler wannabe named Taz on SmackDown, and he keeps wanting to get in his business. Well, guess what, Taz? Who needs ECW? I don't need an orange towel on my head to get over with the fans. And then Rob Van Dam music hits, and he gets angry. And King just starts fucking just getting so mad. He's like, oh, fucking Rob Van Dam, this guy again. And then him and uh, King just start getting into a tiff about ECW again. And then, oh, it's Molina and Johnny Nitro. They're here. They got fired from SmackDown. What the hell are they doing here? Johnny Nitro? Who the fuck is that? Former WWE Tag Team Champion, Johnny Nitro. Is, yeah. he just, is he just Edge from SmackDown? Is is he no. Edge's alternate fight skin? You know, it could be. Dude, what they a, really should have changed his name to Johnny Raw. Or Johnny SmackDown. Nah. That's what it should have nah. been. Nah. What? Nah. Why not? I don't like it. Okay. Johnny Johnny Nitro at least sounds like it's like it could be somebody's fucking wrestler name. Like Nitro's kind of a cool word and all. But like when you Johnny Raw's probably okay, but I mean Johnny SmackDown would be too much. What about Johnny WWE? No. <gasps> no, I got it. Johnny Extreme. Ooh. How about Johnny Wrestling? Well, oh no, no, we don't want that. As long as he doesn't as long as he's not Johnny Cage, because that's already taken. No, he's not Johnny Cage. Uh, but why is Johnny Nitro here? What's he, got, he doing here? I tell us. He got fired from SmackDown, so he just went on a hot one and said, "I guess I'm on Raw now." Well, who's he fighting? John Cena's here. Johnny versus Johnny. Yep, we got yeah. two Johns. No, and Papa. So we got uh... a. <laughs> Telling lies. So they have this new SmackDown talent. They got him on Raw. And so what do they do with John Cena? Are they going to have a good, clean, whole... Oh, John John Cena beat him. He tapped him out. I don't think yeah, Nitro no. got even a little bit of offense in. Listen, but, you know... Well, they did uh, some. But Very I'm small. glad during the whole fight, JR was focused on the actual match while RVD and Lawler wouldn't shut the oh, yeah. fuck up about ECW. Well, I, I, that's true, and I get they're trying to promote it. I will say, while I think the content was bad... It, it shocks me how well RVD can actually talk. Why? Because he's not high off his ass on commentary? Yeah, it's like, because normally a lot of his, like, he's fine when he's high. Like, he, he can cut some decent, like, pro. he cuts, like, good promos to decent. To, eh. But, like, dude, when he's not high and he's just focused, like, dude, like, he could be a commentator, dude. I, I, I thought, like, at least his presentation, his voicing, his projection... Um, and like getting down to the nitty gritty of things, like that part was good. It's just they had a he had to advertise ECW, so it's like the actual content was bad. But no, good uh, on him. This I will say during the murder of Johnny Nitro, uh, murder. I did see in the crowd someone had some big inflatable John Cena hands, and they switched them to uh, double uh, flip offs, which I thought was funny. How did they do that? <laughs> It's funny. Oh my! But yeah, how? So this is probably up there with the meatball marinara segment with the uh, biggest disrespectful moment of the year. So they have this man. They're like, okay, he's a big deal. He's from SmackDown, and then let's just talk about ECW and kill this man in three minutes to our champion. Are, do you like yeah, him yet? Fine. Are you guys interested in Johnny Nitro going forward? Yeah, not really, because we already have Edge and Lita. Oh, there you go. I'm interested. Unless, unless you give me Edge and Lita versus Johnny Nitro and Molina, mirror match. That does need to be a match. And if it doesn't get any worse for this poor guy, he did tap out. And, yeah, he did tap out. And he tried to attack Cena afterwards, and Cena just threw him at uh, Rob Van Dam and took a nasty, nasty bump. Oh, see, yeah. This is, a, true. this is a weak way to push a face. We'll yeah. get a better version on how to push a face later on, but this was true. This was weak. Face. Well, 
I'm Why, John, yeah, this sucks. Suck. Yeah, this fucking sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Uh, RVD and Jerry Lawler just arguing about bullshit for an entire match. How does this sell also, us on RVD versus Cena? <laughs> yeah, RVD left ECW because Paul Heyman owed him like hundreds of thousands of dollars. The the <gasps> only selling thing of that is that John Cena dodged and more, uh, Nitro hit uh, RVD. That's it. That yeah. was selling. All right, guys, hold up. I'm going to take the train break and just screech this to a halt, and I'm going to go backwards because I found this GIF. I found this oh, GIF, no. and I want to set that up for Dave's Bowflex moment of the night. Oh, wow. That... <laughs> so... That's right. We <laughs> put, that on that's... WWE put that on the screen. Rewind, presented by Bowflex. We got Bowflex Dave here to tell us about it. Dave, right, what happened guys. last week that we talked Listen, about Listen, first and foremost... You gotta use the bow flex. It's a fast and easy. Uh, it gives results in six weeks, guaranteed. Um, sometimes even also faster. It, it's sometimes even faster. But what it definitely also does give us is more padding for time, as we just get a like two minute recap of Terry Funk and Time Dreamer coming down to the ring uh, and fighting Edge and Foley last week to show how cool ECW is. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really it, guys. Uh, th without the sponsorship, uh, we would not have both flexes all over the entire stadium and all of the everywhere that, to keep the yeah. wrestlers in top shape. Yes, this is true. So then, uh, to both flex. so then we have a little <laughs> debate in the ring about uh, you know extreme stuff. We got Mick Foley here. We got Paul Heyman here. Uh, Paul's got a nice little hat on. Mix mix a uh, plaited out as usual. He's got the hardcore belt. I don't even know if they even recognize him as the hardcore champion. Yeah, they're co-champions. Fair enough. Where's Edge at? Why isn't he helping his boy out? Anyway. Well, Edge wasn't invited. We'll, fi we'll find out. He, uh, just preparing. Um, I I didn't even... I, I thought they were actually going to fight. I didn't think this was going to be a debate. It's a debate. Paul don't fight. Paul, yeah, Paul Heyman's a manager. He can't fight. He's an advocate. Uh, Nick thanks the audience here in Tacoma, Washington. It was great to see Molina. He said, but that's not why we're here, Paul. You called me a prostitute. You know what, Paul? You're right. I'm a prostitute. You know, guess what? ECW was the pimp. That's what you treated me like. That's why I am a prostitute, because of you, not like Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon gives I me money, millions of dollars. You gave me nothing. I have to say something huh. about this. I, I, I do not condone... The shaming of sex workers in the segment. I think it's very poorly tasted. It's bad. We gotta support our sex workers, folks. Support Mick Foley on OnlyFans right now. Drop the link in the comments. Hit Get him some up. Mick Foley feed pics. Get his feed yeah, pics. Uh, Get Foley's his merch. Fucked up toes. I support it. He gives Honestly, a thumbs up. Mick Get Foley calling Vince a billion dollar pimp was a yikes for me. I mean, he was right. He was oh, right. Yeah. He did it. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. You know? Allegedly. He was a little bit upset to hear that uh, that stupid little one-night stand pay-per-view is going to be him and Edge versus Terry Funk and Tommy Dreamer. He goes, good. they're not even hardcore like us. They're all a bunch of losers. We're the new hardcore standard. You know what, Paul? I wish you luck with your pot-smoking, porn-addicted Mick Foley rip-offs. And Paul's like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what, Mick? You're coming for, at me while you're a guy who has spent his entire career as a Terry Funk ripoff. And Mick gets really upset. He goes, guess, you know what? I admit it. Terry Funk is the greatest wrestler I've ever saw. I'll admit Tommy Dreamer was tough as anyone. I don't know why he had to say that. He didn't have to say that. He, he didn't have to lie like that. But he said, they didn't have the guts to get in the ring with me here. And Paul Paul's like, you know what? You all you did was pull a sock out of your pants and make the billion dollar pimp laugh while he was in the hospital. Mick, how many shots did you get the title before you pulled the sock out of your pants? And they're just getting angry at each other. They're like, "Ooh, ugh. you know what? You know what, Paul? Terry Funk and Tommy Dreamer's problems, but they had bingo hall balls. Yeah, they didn't have the guts to do what I did. The gutsiest move I ever made was wandering out of my comfort zone." to the great wide unknown and becoming one of the greatest stars this company's ever seen. 
You didn't have me because I sold out. You hate me because I had the audacity to realize on my own what everybody did sooner or later. The future of ECW went four ways. A drunk, a drug addict, a convict, or a corpse. I was like, damn, okay. Mick and Paul were cooking. Corpse. Uh, every time Mick is on this fucking show, I just think I hate hardcore wrestling. It's true. Yeah, we're he, all... He's wow. so awesome, and that shit just robbed us of more Mick Foley. And you know what? I know he said he wasn't going to do the one more match. No. Fuck. Fuck that. Get in shape. Do that last match, Mick Foley. You owe me. You owe us. And you don't have to do this. You owe everyone. Go out there and kill yourself. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Nico. Nico's crossing the tracks, folks. Nico wants him to cross the tracks. Nico, Nico mailed Bowflex straight to Mick Foley's house and said, here you go, champ. Get in shape, punk. Get good, right. nerd. And you know what? I'll be his final opponent. I'll do it. I'll fight him. <laughs> Paul, Paul pretty much is like, you know what? It's your fault. You took your legacy and threw it away to become a cheap shot taking, lead a hand smooching, edge ass kissing whore. But you know what? They're going to take care of you guys at the pay-per-view. But me, I have a new vision for ECW. You know, because I got, I talked to Vince in the back, and guess what? He said that I can get two draft picks. Guys, this is the draft, by the way. Welcome to the WWE draft for today. You guys excited? This is the draft, guys. Oh, oh what? Oh, oh. When so, was this ever mentioned? So, Never. So, so the draft isn't a big deal. It's just, oh, yeah, we're, we're switching out two folks. Yep, one from Raw, one and, from SmackDown to ECW. What's the, oh, okay, so was the 05 one a big deal? Yeah. What about 07? Uh, let me see if there was an 07 one. WWE draft. There was a draft, yeah. So just this one. Yeah. I wonder why. Is Don't it cuz I guess it's cuz they got ECW and they're just going to throw all the new people there anyways. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Uh let's see. Yeah, and then uh Mick interjects says, "You know what? You're predictable, Paul. I already know your first draft pick. It's Rob Van Dam, Paul. You can't fool me. He loved ECW so much. I'm sure he'll love the new one. But you know, the only reason he liked ECW so much was cuz he was truly a high flyer got his ass. And then Paul's like, well, you know, when RVD beats John Cena for the title and Chris is it the ECW world title, you see Rob Van Dam will be witnessed by ECW audience and everybody watches Raw and SmackDown. But guess what, Mick? My SmackDown draft pick happens to be. And then Mick's like, I don't, I, 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 is it another Mick Foley reject, Paul? Who, who's it? And he's like, no, you know what? I want to do something different for the new vision ECW. Here's my pick for the 2006 draft. We got Kurt Angle on ECW, boys. He comes out. He's blasting. He's blasting. He's yaying. He is perked out of his goddamn mind. And he just... He's in berserker mode. He looks, he looks at Paul Heyman, and he's kind of like a machine because he just kind of like sees through Paul Heyman and then just turns slightly to Mick and just kills Mick Foley. He's p- p- punching the shit out of him. He's hitting him with headbutts. It was a massacre. I don't know why he killed Mick Foley for whatever reason, but I, I popped really hard for that. It was an awesome yeah. segment. What are you talking about? He's He is the ECW berserker now, which it's funny because wasn't the whole thing with Kurt Angle in the ECW that he was actually going to be on ECW, or like at least more than he was, and then they pulled that Sandman gimmick out where they crucified somebody, and they were like, no, oh, fuck that. I'm out. I think Kurt's the only one throughout this show to be on all four shows coming soon. Yes, yep. he was at the ECW show where Raven crucified Sandman was like, maybe I won't do this. Yeah. So, I mean, Kurt Angle is the wrestler of the year 06. I mean, is he not? Yeah, he's on everything. No. Well, who is Triple that? H. Let's Whoa. go. Triple A, you know what? He's right. Boo. Boo you. To me, Kurt Angle is just another sweaty, bald man. But oh, come he on. does have a mouth guard. 
I bet Kurt Angle's gonna wash out of this fucking company in like a month or two. Go to some bingo hall fed. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? What's up? What? <laughs> bingo, bingo hall fed. <laughs> yeah, bingo hall dork. That's that's Joe on Smack Up. He's a oh. bingo hall dork. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a phone call. Hold on, wait. Hello? Yeah. Oh. Extremely extremely sideways, Ty. What's up? Yeah. Oh, you got your draft pick in. Well, who, well who's going to who's going to extremely sideways? Nico. Nico, what? you've been drafted to extremely sideways. What? You've been drafted, pal. You're going extremely what? sideways. You're what? going there. Nico, what? I think he's Muhammad Ali and some shit. <laughs> I, I've been rused. I've been betrayed. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Welcome to the draft. <laughs> he called me up just now. He, he's been, uh, he gave me a lot of money. Fucking. <laughs> well. I'm steaming. I'm steaming. Well, now you're an ECW guy and a Fuck raw guy. That. And smack up guy. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. I see. I see. But yeah, great segment. We got a new member to Extremely Sideways. Fuck that. We got two <laughs> new members to ECW. Pretty good. Pretty good segment. Yeah. That's now, right. Speaking of Extreme Nico, what do you got about this match coming up? Sorry, I'm still steaming. Give me a minute. Okay. Nico's a fucking hot dog right now. Why he be steaming? <laughs> I'm gonna kill. I'm what gonna... the fuck? Did you just laugh into a kazoo? What happened? <laughs> no, I'm just laughing. Don't kiss. Don't kiss. Steaming Don't like kiss. a dollar fifty Costco hot dog. Think of the women's match. Think of Triple H, the hero. Hold on, Nico. Okay. I got. I got you. They got the strip poker segment at the end of the year. Are you back Raised. in? Are you back in? For a moment. Okay. Momentary clarity. Just, just, just get a little breath, okay. breath in. Think of Kelly Kelly. Just get a little breathe in. Okay. <sighs> okay. 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 The energies are reflowing. Okay. What? Edge and Big Show? Hell yeah. I'm excited for it. I hope Big Show fucking kills Edge. Edge. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hold on. We have lost. I thought this was a bit. We have Sorry lost the Nico. Play. I'm back. I thought that was a bit. <laughs> Keep it in. No. Keep all that in. No, no, it was a momentary distraction. Anyways, <laughs> that's your big show. First off, it's been six months mm -hmm. since we started. Almost. What the fuck is going on with big show? He's yeah, looking know. terrible. Like, even from like a few weeks ago, like his, like his hair's like gone. Ish. I mean, it's still there, but like, oh my god, he's he's looking rough tonight. He's coming down. He's looking rough, dude. He's just not looking good. And then you got Edge coming out. He's got Lita. You know, they got the entrance. The big deal. And this match starts, and I'm gonna. I'm going to sell T straight. Big Show beats up Edge. Edge is cowardly heel. He kind of runs around a bit, cries a bit. Then he gets the upper hand for a bit, but Big Show comes back. And then what basically changes the momentum of this match is when he goes for like some type of toss or slam, Edge grabs the referee and then throws him to the side of the ring, which gives Lita the opportunity to go for what she desired all those months ago. Some big balls. I mean, some big show balls. I oh, mean, yeah. She hits him in the balls. Oh, yeah. yeah. She gives him the good old Ric Flair from the back. You know? Who knows what else she did back there. We're not here to comment on that. We'll leave that to your imagination. But he gets reamed in the testiculars. His testicular fortitude is minimum. Damn. He is holding him, and this gives Edge the opportunity to take a chair and whack him in the jaw. 
Big Show goes down like a giant. Edge gets rid of the evidence, goes for the three count. One, two, three. Edge is your number one contender. I couldn't care even more than I did it before. So, in quotations, I don't care. This sucked. Here's the the one thing that confuses me about this. They already have a number one contender. Well, this is for vengeance. So whoever wins at One Night Stand, Ed fights at vengeance. Fair enough. I am sick of the shit incompetent referees constantly putting themselves too close so that they get absolutely grundled and become just useless. I'm sick of Lita and her cheating ass. And uh, sorry, Nico, I'm sorry, but you you skipped over quite a few bits. Uh, uh, I, I Edge will be was honest, at... I did not care about this match. <laughs> wow. Uh, Big, Big Show's at the edge, and Lita does her thing where she tries to grab uh, the leg of the wrestler to protect Edge. Big Show just looks down at her kicks his leg and just pulls her into the ring and just stares her down and puts the fear in her and she just crawls out of the ring. And then the first time Edge uh, Edge tries to get the uh, chair drop on Big Show, Big Show just slaps the chair out of his hands mid-swing and stares him down again. Mm -hmm. But then, yes... He grabs Edge. Edge grabs the ref. Ref gets fucking tossed, of course, giving uh, them the the opportunity to cheat and uh, get an unfair advantage on the big show. It's just I'm I'm so sick of it. I hate it. I well, hate it so fucking much. Well, These refs suck. They need to have more than one especially when Lita is lurking in the fucking sidelines when she fucking shouldn't be. I hate it. Benny, let me tell you, see? Why am, that's Benny's, that's good. Benny's not here. Benny didn't come in because he was told it wasn't... <laughs> this is Emerald. Benny's not fucking here because he was told. Same no. Person. Is that's, my that, life. That's just your is first name. Love. Anyways, here's the deal. Uh, I love it. I love your hatred. I love how it flows. I think it's excellent. I've just unfortunately gone to the point where my hatred became apathetic. I just watched this. I'm like, of course Edge is going to win. Of course this is why. Interesting bits that definitely add to the groaning. But no. Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree with you. I just hit the point of apathy. (laughs) Fair enough. So it's good. It's good. It's good. Hate more. Hate more. But you know who hates less? Viscera? This whole crew right now, because guess what? Oh, I'm hating right now. Welcome to SmackDown yeah, Rebound. JBL no, got fired. Why is this here? JBL this had raw. a night. JBL had a night, Emerald. We gotta talk about it. Just real quick. JBL was on the top of the world. He was United States champion. All he did was talk about how Ray has all this machismo and that he stinks. He beat him up at the pay-per-view, lost on a technicality, so then he's angry. And then Ray comes out on SmackDown and says, guess what? You haven't defended your United States Championship yet. And he's like, but, but... And then he got blindsided and killed by Bobby Lashley. He lost his title. And then he said, you know what? I'm putting all my chips in the in the bag right now, Teddy Long. I will leave. I will quit if I can't win that belt. And then that fucker Chavo Guerrero got interfered again. Yeah, Chavo Guerrero, guys, from Raw. He's on SmackDown now. He interfered again, and JBL lost. And now he is fired from SmackDown in the most heartbreaking fashion. I couldn't believe it. Folks, I couldn't believe it. Fuck JBL. Hey, look, all I'm just saying is JBL had what's coming to him. He lost the United States to a wonderful man. Bobby Lashley comes from a rich background and then he got fired by Rey Mysterio, another wonderful man from a rich background. Yeah. And just putting the middle finger to the old ways and in with the new. Couldn't believe it. 
it's a beautiful story. It was so heartbreaking. America. Yeah, I know. I remember JBL. He's that little bitch that tried to cheat in that drinking contest. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, back then, I'd call him. He's not a real Texan. Fuck him. Well, now he's Ooh, fired. I'll kill him. Now he's... Yeah, he's fired. Get him out of here. Yeah, and what hero made sure he got killed in that segment? It's Rey Mysterio. No. What? In the drinking segment. Oh, my favorite oh, my wrestler. Bad. Stone Cold Steve Austin. No. No. Do the fucking nah. bit. Somebody else threw him back in the ring. Nah, it was Stone Cold. I don't know. I don't know the bit. I'm fumbling. No, I don't remember anybody else there. Putting a bow flex in all your fucking houses, I swear. <laughs> um, I apologize. Fucking, as long as one goes to mix, I'm okay well, with it. Whoever did that is Emerald's favorite wrestler, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. You got the context clues brought me back. <laughs> it's a very good, very funny bit that should definitely have went this long. I agree. Thank you. He's a he's a very nice guy. Very well. Everybody dude. fucking laugh. <laughs> 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 Listener, post hee hee ha ha in the comments. Thank you. You better. We'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, not SmackDown, cooking not cooking. Actually, you know that episode was pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. That's yeah, that pay per view oh was dog God. shit. That pay per view was dog shit. That pay per view was bad. Uh, you, you were trying to defend it, like, uh, you know, we just got sleepy. I'm like, nah, I, I knew it was dog shit. But that episode was good. That episode was fine. Fine. Yeah, it was fine. I don't want to get yelled at. King Booker is just fine. You're a disgrace. We can't talk King about that. We can't talk Booker, about that. It's Nico. not on the SmackDown Rebound. You can't oh. talk about King Booker. Shut the oh, fuck. oh, oh, oh. That's that's We censored. got something important. ECW One Night Stand is sponsored by X-Men, the official game. That's right. It's Heart not the power of the X-Men. It's not the movie. It's the video game for 360, <laughs> PS3, and Wii. Why today. would they do that? I don't know. Not the good one yet. That comes later. Oh, why? All right, Emerald. I'm taking you backstage. I'm going to have you hang out with your your best friend, Triple H, and Vince. I'm bringing Are you back. You? Yeah. So. I'm cooking so hard. I, I have to be real here. I don't like any of the backstage segments because that's not what I'm watching the show for. But that. Oh. I, I don't like the bit we do where we reference Triple H's sledgehammer as his cock. I mean, but they made it very the, obvious. In the yeah. context of this segment, I will make an exception. Okay. Because on this Memorial Day, May 29th, 2006, we have Triple H, cock in hand, making his way to the <laughs> ring. And Vince Kennedy McMahon stops him. He's like, well, hey, you, you know, I've been thinking. I've been, I've been stewing a little bit. And, you know, I'm so confident that you're going you're gonna to win this match that you don't you don't need you don't need this. So I'm gonna take this away from you. And Vince performs bottom surgery on Triple H and takes his cock away. No. Don't worry, guys. I'm cooking up a dastardly Nico <laughs> meme. So I'll get him, we'll get him back in a moment. All right, um, listeners, we're back. You can hear that on our uh, Patreon. If you buy 17 jars of our life-saving semen on Redbubble, we will personally recreate the segment that might have just gotten cut for you. Anyway, yeah. Cash back to H's semen. cock. <laughs> oh yeah, we're talking about cocks. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Vince, Vince takes. Remove. This I disagree. Cock. These are my thoughts on cock. Vincent takes Triple H's cock away, and Triple H is just staring Vince down as he does that. And now we're in the ring. And who's standing there in the ring? Take it away. Main event Marty. Yeah, main event Marty. All right. You guys ready for a garbage raw main event that's even more nothing than the usual nothing it is? Yeah, can you tell me, here we yeah. go. Can you tell me about the match type first? Oh, yeah. It's a spirit jack match. Oh, what is that, yeah. Martin? It's a lumberjack match, but they've got spirit because the spirit squad. 
If now, you don't know what a lumberjack match is, it's where two people fight in it, and there's a bunch of boys on the outside, and if somebody gets thrown out of the ring, they're supposed to chuck them back in and also beat the shit out of them for a little bit. So you've got Kenny coming out here. The Spirit Squad says, Kenny, Kenny, he's our man. Very uninspired chant this week. Their chanting and cheering is just so fucking bad. I'm glad Benny's not here to see Benny, it. okay. B- Tim Ross. Nope. No. Benny's dead. <laughs> I killed him. Jim Ross thinks go, Sean's Ty. career is fucking done for. He's been mourning Shawn Michaels all night. This is about a 14-minute match after the entrances, so Kenny comes out. You know, he's Kenny, whatever. Triple H comes out. He drank the water. He spit the water. He go to RAR. He takes advantage early with a few strikes. The commentators do not shut the fuck up about Kenny being 20 years old. Never. This whole match. Uh, at one point... I forget what exactly he's referring to, but Jim Ross is again. Yeah, Sharon Stone is going to start wearing underwear. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you, Jim, for the line. for the basic instinct joke in two thousand six. Uh, Ty, throw up basic instinct right now. The whole movie. There it is. <laughs> can I can I take main event Marty and his eyes away for a second to look at the raw down chat? Oh yeah, I'm looking at that. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, yeah, okay. Well, all right, Ty, throw that up. Yeah. <laughs> Nico is the Cody of the You Don't Have to Do This Network. <laughs> anyway. It's true. Anyway, they fight for a while, whatever. Who cares? Triple H goes for the early pedigree. One of those crazy white boys runs in, distracts the ref, so that another crazy white boy can attack him on behind. Triple H runs wild on them. We go to commercial, back at commercial, Triple H still has the advantage on everybody because Triple H for this whole match, even though he's fighting five people, is on top. Thanks, Hunter. Uh, he finally goes to the outside, then the Spirit Squad gather around, they kick him in the ribs repeatedly. They chuck him back in the ring, Kenny gets a two count. At this point, I've written real nothing match here. Mm-hmm. Triple H just gets pummeled for a while, more two counts. Little bit of a comeback when Kenny goes for the corner spear. Triple H dodges. Kenny's shoulder is hurty. The ref deals with that, and then somebody misses a huge fucking cue because Johnny stalks around the ring forever like a weirdo as the ref has to continue to pretend to be distracted. And then finally Hunter realizes he's supposed to get up, and Johnny kicks him in the mouth. Hunter gets thrown back outside. They kick him in the ribs again. Somebody has a sign that says John Cena, WWE, Triple H. Thanks, guy. Someone also, else for... had a sign that said "Broke Back Spirit Squad." That's good. Happy I'm glad they keep Happy doing this. Much. I'm glad they keep doing that joke. Also, earlier I forgot to mention somebody held up a Push Hogan sign. That was Naram and I time traveling. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I miss Triple him. H hits a DDT. Everybody's dead on the floor. More wrestling happens. Who gives a shit? Triple H ends up in the corner. The squad trip him, smash his dick and his knees on the ring post. Kenny hits a chop block for two. And now we just get the rest of this match. They're just working on Hunter's right knee repeatedly until they get too big for their bridges. Triple H throws one of them into the ropes and makes Kenny fall off the top rope he's on. And Kenny hurting his penor. More nothing back and forth. Way more. And now the squad again hit a distraction to stop the pedigree. And Triple H just fights all of them off at the same time, hits the pedigree, and wins. So Triple H has won this five on one match in which he's been ganged up on constantly, very easily because he just completely started no selling his knee again. That was clean, too. Thanks, wasn't Hunter. It? That was clean. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, 100% clean. Don't worry. He really had to look strong. So. He wins, and then the rest of the squad again come in, kick him in the ribs, ruin his knee. Somebody has a sign. Losers. Yeah, somebody has a sign says the twenty dollar man. Twenty dollar man. They kick him in the ribs in the ring, throw him on the outside, keep kicking him in the ribs, slam his head on the table, and he's just running away. He's just crawling away like no, please. But then we reveal, he does an epic cock reveal. He's hidden another cock at ringside. 
and he stands up on his shattered knees, showing no ill effects of it, with his cock, and all of these young men meet the business end of Hunter's cock, and they all run away, and then Vince comes out and says, yeah, next week you're joining the Kiss My Ass Club, buddy. This sucked. Yeah, even, this even the crowd Fuck agreed. Me. Crowd kept cheering, Kenny sucks. What? Kenny did they, suck. They, they need awesome. to hire multiple refs anytime the Spirit Squad is uh, in existence. Uh, why does anybody them. even agree to fight them uh, for any of this? It's, it's bullshit. Let's go Triple H. Get fucked, Kenny. Spirit Squad sucks. They're sore losers. <gasps> okay, Benny, Benny, you gotta remember, Vince... But he's not here. Benny's dead. Never dead in my heart. I shot him in the back of the head as he left. Okay, yeah, well, cool. you, you might be getting investigated for that one. But now, he, here's the thing, right? You got to remember, Vince McMahon is legitimately the founder and CEO of the company. So oh, he can shit. do whatever he wants. It's his company. So if he wants Triple H to fight all five members of the Spirit Squad, that, that like that's the gimmick. That's the whole shtick. Like, he does whatever he wants, and he, he, you've been watching for a while now, that's all Vince McMahon does. He does whatever he wants, and that, that's why these matches end up like this. It's because the he wants... should be dragged out in the street and shot. Oh my god, a lot of violence on this episode. We're gonna, yeah. We're gonna happy go... Happy Pride Month. Happy... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I didn't forget. If I was so bad, I was so bad. What? <laughs> I think I fucked that up so bad. What? No, 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 no. Nico's cooking. Dissolving. We're gonna say it. Fuck the fed. Fuck the fed. Fuck the nah. fed, dude. Fuck, Fuck the, fed. the fed. Okay. What an episode, guys. <laughs> um, I God mean, episode-wise, it was okay. There was some good. A lot of bad. A lot of SmackDown leaking in. A lot of ECW leaking in. I completely forgot during the Edge versus Big Show, uh, uh, J Jr. said uh, something about he's like gravity. It's the law, you know. And I just thought that was like the best quote Jr. has ever said for me. I loved it because gravity. It's the law, you know. Yeah, but you don't follow the law. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, you thought you were slick over there. That's what's why I'm floating. What's everyone up to? What's everyone doing? What do you mean? How's everyone doing? What? I uh, mean, Fine? outside my intense rage of violence. We got we got I'm the okay. draft, dude. That was the draft episode, special episode. Did it feel Fuck like it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. No. Why not? Fuck yeah. yeah. We got the Fuck spear yeah. jack match. Everyone thought something else was gonna happen, and we all got edged out. Like, was that it? Like, was that the no? Okay. No, because he's got to kiss his ass next week. <laughs> oh, true. True. Everyone's favorite. You know, is... they just said, "Oh, you know what? No match. I'm done. F uh, you're not gonna fight these guys anymore. You're gonna kiss my ass, pal." Fuck. All I would rather say... see that than these interminable matches. Hey, Fair enough. I'll say this. I think this is a much better showing of a baby face over what we saw with John Cena. Like, at least the odds were against him in this fucking match. At least he had a fight for it. At least <clears> he <throat> won, and he was clever enough to trick this fucking baby, like the heels. I don't know. I thought Triple H looked good. I thought this was great for him. I thought it was a great babyface moment. It was a great match. I, I well, I'm glad did. he won. Wow, you mean Triple H made himself look really strong and won a match he shouldn't have? It, why he would should never he do have that. won this match? He clearly should have won this match. That's crazy. Because, because they have Kenny, and this is their big heel group, and their main event every goddamn week, and they just geek him out every week. Yeah. There's five of them. He can take the L by cheating. That's yeah, why he's the goat wrestler, though. Kurt Angle could never beat these five guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kurt Angle could never beat well, five guys. I mean, 
look, at the end of the day, I mean, they're all booked as like Schwami heels who only can win because they have the numbers against them. And, you know, in this case, they lost because of it. It's like, I don't think this one's a big deal that the Spirit Squad lost. I don't ever really think it's a big deal if they lost. It kind of, that's kind of what I feel like they're booked for. So it's like, to me, it's like... They get them out of my goddamn main event. Like, but right. no, because right now the only reason they're there is because they're Vince's baby boys. They're surrogates for his son who's currently getting facial surgery after that sledgehammer hit. It's, you know, it's just like they're, they're his goons right now. And they're nobody goons it. harder for the Spirit Squad than Vince McMahon. And it, you know what? It puts him in a high spot. They do well, and sure, they lost, but, like, I don't think you're really supposed to, like, get behind the Spirit Squad as, like, all oh, these are, like, actual threats. Like, they're geeks. And for geeking it up, they do a geeking good job. I just, I don't understand why they are Not so even. dominant. They're so dominant against Sean, but get killed by Triple H. Well, look at how Triple H is built. He's, he's built like a really big T. Okay. Shawn Michaels, he's he's built like he's built like a lowercase L. Let's be honest. All right. Does anybody have anything to say about that? I'm bad. No, I don't think so. He's the lowercase L. Sense. Okay. No. Right. Yeah, the lowercase of. L. Shawn Michaels. I mean, aren't we all kind of lowercase L's? No, I'm, I'm, I'm built sometimes like a... I... <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> Nah, I'm built like an E. Chris Masters wasn't on this show. Thank God. Carlito's Thank on it barely. Just God. a little segment. A little backstage. You know, Chris Masters wasn't on this episode, but I do want to say one thing about him. He looks like looks like a guy where <laughs> if something super bad happens to him, he'll relapse so bad and just become like just some fat drunk in an apartment somewhere. That's what, that's the kind of guy Chris Masters. You're saying that he's like. the guy from Dodgeball. <laughs> we need an Emerald. Just look at him. Uh, look chat. at him. Just look at it. We just need to just look at him segment. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we could do that. We'll just show uh, uh, Emerald like ten thousand images, like fast yeah. cut it, and you'll be like, ah. <laughs> be like, enough, enough. Stop, please, just kill me. And, uh, yeah, you've been raw down, folks. 